guys pk here hope you're doing well thursday morning i'm here in my backyard um i'm going to talk today about data about data so the majority of property investors in australia are actually not successful the majority of them don't get past one property and i was thinking about why that is <clears throat> maybe part of the reason is that they actually don't want to get past one property many investors are accidental investors where they have bought a property to live in and then now have moved you know into another property 10 15 years on and instead of selling the property the first one they've decided to keep it as an investment property so those are what you'd call <clears throat> sort of uh accidental property investors so taking those people out of the question basically the majority of property investors who are intentionally investing in property to create a passive income they don't get past one property and the reason is quite simple um, there's no secret source the reason is quite simple they aren't looking at the data so how many people do you know that are property investors or maybe this is even you <clears throat> and you've decided that a particular city or town is where you should invest so you might be hearing podcasts or or commentary or articles and it says that brisbane is affordable and so you've decided to invest in brisbane and you've thought where should i invest in brisbane i'll look you know let me invest in somewhere that's close to a hospital or close to a good school and things like that or maybe you haven't even taken it that far you've just said look i already live in adelaide and i know the five suburbs around where i live very well so <clears throat> I know a good deal when I can see one and they go ahead and, and buy in their so-called backyard um, so that's those are examples of property investing <clears throat> without looking at the data maybe you've looked at vacancy rate maybe you've looked at historical growth maybe you've looked at things like yield but really those are just surface level indicators of of property markets those aren't really detailed indicators <clears throat> and if you're investing in your backyard if you're investing based on how a particular geography like a city or town is going to perform <clears throat> and if you're only looking at these sort of surface level indicators then really you're giving you yourself no chance of getting capital growth in the short term and in a buy and hold strategy a completely passive strategy where <clears throat> you know, you've got a nine to five job that you need to commit to, you can't really do developments and things like that, then you really need the short term capital growth because that's how you will take the equity out of your first property and get into the second property and the third property, <clears throat> right? But looking at, you know, proximity to schools, shopping centers, parks, you know, motorways, these aren't indicators of, of short term growth, nor is the vacancy rate nor is historical price growth nor is yield these things in of themselves don't tell us anything about how the house prices in a particular suburb are going to fare in the short term and when i say short term i mean you know one two three four years around that time frame which is really when we want to be able to extract significant equity significant equity meaning enough to be able to get the second house all right so if you aren't looking at the data there's so many things so many data points that we need to look at it's not overwhelming once you know how to do it um, everything is available online everything is available on various websites and i'm not talking about rp data or core logic and things like that it's all available we need to be able to analyze all the suburbs across australia 15,000 suburbs apply real data like average vendor discounting like stock on market like building approvals like online search interests real data that together forms for us a real picture and a scientific filtering mechanism so that we can pick our suburb and we know then with consistency and accuracy and precision that the the suburb will grow in the short term right that's that's the great thing about the system that's the great thing about knowing what works is that once you have it you don't need to guess you can actually retrospectively apply the system 
the various data factors, their relative importance, the thresholds we want the data to be within for each factor, how flexible we are, how to interpret one data point versus another. Once you know how to do this, then there's no guesswork. There's absolutely no guesswork. In fact, you can go to any suburb um, historically and see which suburbs have boomed, see which suburbs have increased by 5, 10, 15% on a particular year, and then just reverse engineer the system and say, all right, well, if I apply the system in 2014, you know, clearly the suburb boomed in 2015, and if I apply it in 2014, would it have told me to buy the suburb? And the great thing about the system is that, yes, it would have, regardless if it's 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, regardless if we're talking about suburbs in Perth, Adelaide, Tassie, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, find a suburb that has increased in value historically and apply this system retrospectively and that's how you get proof, you, that's how you get confidence that this data actually works. Because when you apply it, you actually see, yeah, look, if we were having this conversation, if I had applied it in 2016, I would have seen that Ballarat was just about to boom and I would have gone ahead and bought there and lo and behold, it did boom. And <clears throat> that's just an example. So that's the great thing about data. It doesn't leave much to um, subjectivity. It is what it is. It, you can take the opinion out of property investing. And if you're really serious about not being stuck at the first property, if you're really serious about being better than the majority of property investors, then please, please, please don't just look at vacancy. Don't just look at historical growth. Don't just look at hospitals, schools, transport links, you know, um, like green leafy street, all these things, I'm not saying they don't matter, but they don't dictate short term growth, they don't dictate growth in the first five years, which is really what we want. We need growth in the first five years. Anyone can predict what will happen to a suburb in 25 years, it'll go up. Okay, but in five years, that's the art. And if you're applying this scientific methodology, if you're applying the data, then you will get fifty, hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars growth in the first two, three, two, four, five years. Okay, we can't say exactly down to the percentage what it will be, but you will definitely, definitely, definitely beat the average. So I'm, I'm just requesting everyone to lean on the data, not lean on opinion, regardless of who that opinion comes from, whether it's me or whether it's someone else. Don't listen to opinion only listen to data. And when it comes to data, we can't just look at the three superficial factors. There are more than 20 things to look at. Okay, hopefully that was valuable and, and is giving you some encouragement and confidence that you can actually do this. Um, okay, so hopefully that was awesome um, and, and valuable. Please, if it was, then give me a like or comment below so I can hear and see what you guys are thinking. Um, if you disagree, then feel free to, to comment below as well and, and we can have a bit of a chat. Otherwise, just let me know what your thoughts are. Um, my name's PK and yeah, hopefully that was valuable. And uh, yeah, just shout out if you need any help. Catch ya, bye.